they're at this party and they're talking about negotiating some land deal in New Jersey and Chevy Chase's friends, the Brazilianaires, decide they're going to come to him. And he's like, whatever, they're not going to show up. The next morning, though, they all meet up and he's just like, I don't really want to take this chick anywhere, so just drive her to New Jersey. And then she shows up in the elevator looking kind of good, I guess. Everybody's they're just like, hmm. Maybe I will take her to New Jersey. Give me that. Give me them keys. And like they go. The Brazilian areas are there too. And they're like, let's all go to New Jersey for some reason. We're in New York, but we want to go to New Jersey because we're bored and we won't have anything else to do. Like we could go to the Bahamas, but instead we'll just cruise to Bumblefuck, which is where they're going. And they're like, oh my god, this is so cool. Car chase shit. Long ass car chase. And like they're like, what the hell? And like, there's like the sign, so he's got to take this right in there going through the oil fields and almost getting hit by cars and stuff. And it's pretty cool, you know? It's a pretty gnarly scene. This movie escalates a lot. I'm going to get in New York. And out of nowhere, they get pulled over. Because these guys got night his car like Fast and Furious, Tokyo Drift. And they get pulled over and everybody's just like, this is your fault, Chevy Chase. Even though we were just hyping your ass up, super crazy, now we hate you and this is your fault. And Chevy Chase is like, fine. And guess who the cop is? John freaking Candy. And he's just like, what up, y'all? I'm John Candy. You guys are under arrest. Let's go. And they're like, God damn it. So they take their asses to the courthouse and they're driving on through, driving, driving, driving. Takes them to the judge's little section of land, a little slice of heaven, and there's a lot of cars and a lot of piles of toasters and old microwaves. I love it. Like, I think this movie has the best set design, costume design, all that shit. Even though it's, I wish John Candy would have uh, got the okay to make the original script that he wrote because it sounded a lot more hardcore. This movie is supposed to be scary, but it really isn't. I never thought it was scary. I thought it was a crazy comedy. Like I, people said, it's it's a horror film. Like there's horrible aspects to it, but like I, I mean, even as a kid, I was never like this is scary. But I can see how this was originally really scary. I had to cut all this stuff because like some of this stuff. It's pretty disturbing when you think about it, especially because, like, it's like I love Dan Aykroyd, but you can tell he's got some pretty crazy shit in his mind. You know, nothing wrong with that, though. They're in front of the judge, and it's like the tension just builds and builds because, like, you know they're in trouble. They've been brought in front of this crazy-ass guy in front of this crazy-ass house. They're talking smack, like, oh, yeah, it's fine. And then Dan Aykroyd pops up as the judge, and he's wearing the craziest makeup you've ever seen. People are like, whoa. And then it just, like, it starts cracking jokes and having a good-ass time. You're like, whoa, what the hell? Like, what is this fucking movie? <laughs> like, already, it's like, I can only imagine seeing this movie in the theaters, sight unseen, not knowing what the fuck's happening, and just getting your mind blown over and over. It's kind of like a post-horror horror movie where you're like, I'm a monster, blah, 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 blah. I look really scary. And he does. Like, he looks really scary. Dan Aykroyd's face in this movie looks like an old wrinkly nutsack. Like, I'm sure they planned it. Like, I'm sure he probably took a picture of his balls and was like, make this ball sack into a face that I can wear. And they were like, we'll be right on that. And that's what they got. Cause he really looks like a wrinkly old nutsack. And it only gets worse from there. He's got this crazy ass house that like looks amazing to live in with like all this secret stuff, some sort of crazy trick house. I don't know if that's a real thing or if there's houses like that or if he was just ripping off the Winchester mystery house or whatever, but like I would love to live in a house that's got like trap doors and moving floors and shit and like all that. So the guy see just they it's just like, you know what, you guys are in trouble now, and he pushes the button, trapdoor falls, and they land in a pile of squeaky toys, and I'm like, dude, I want to install that in the bar at Aaron Rose so bad, and like, have people who aren't cool sitting there, just push the button, have the trapdoor fall the fuck out, and they just land on a pile of soft toys, like, oh shit, where am I? And they just leave. That'd be cool. This house is awesome. John Candy hates his life, though, you can just tell, because of the dirty looks he's giving him, and the fact that Dan Aykroyd's calling him a little you know, jerk face and just not treating him right. And he's like, you know what, one day I'm gonna leave this place. Dan Aykroyd's like, yeah, right, dude, shut up. Everyone's pissed at Chevy Chase for driving like an asshole and getting him in trouble and smoking cigars in front of the judge and talking smack and getting him trapped doors. So they're all like mad at him and like, they're like, you're fired. And he's like, you can't fire me because I quit. Shut up. So that happens. Another group of people come through from, they look like they're from Jersey City or just New Jersey in general coming, going into New York, like the bridge or tunnel crowd, and they've got a crap ton of balls because they're all up in John Candy's face, like, are you going to pull a gun on a cop in New Jersey? Dude, you're asking for trouble, but John Candy's got a bigger gun, even bigger gun, looks like a goddamn, like, Indiana Jones pistol that you shoot up some Nazis with. Pretty cool. 
And uh, they end up just going back to the judge. And the judge is like, ooh, I'm going to get me a piece of that. And he does, because he drops them into the goddamn bone grinder machine. Oh, no, he's got, they got all these drugs. Drops them into the goddamn bone grinder machine, and they get grinded up. And it's like a cool roller coaster at first, and it sounds really fun and awesome. But then there's like a goddamn thing that eats them, and it fucking eats their goddamn bones and spits them out into a pile. And it sounds like I'm lying, but I'm fucking not. Like I can imagine this being a lot scarier on paper, but it's sort of played for laughs because the bones are like hee hee bones. But like, can you imagine like a machine that strips your fucking meat from the bones and spits it out to a big ass pile? It's scary, scary shit. That. And another part that I really, really remember from this movie when I was a kid is that they have the, the big ass can of Hawaiian Punch and he puts like the oil thing on top of it and they're just pouring the Hawaiian Punch. I don't know why, but I just remember that very clearly. Just them drinking some gross ass juice out of that weird ass oil can and that being awesome. The food is fucking crazy. There's ants on a log. That's disgusting. It looks like literally ants on peanut butter on celery. I don't know. Or maybe it's raisins. They don't really explain what it is. <coughs> Bless me. And then there's another part is probably the craziest part of the whole movie is the damn hot dog scenes where like let's have some of them dogs and they're like we're eating dogs and he's like no hot dogs wink and he's got this goddamn machine it's like spitting out steam and it's like Psh! and they open it and it's just the nastiest little hot dogs I've ever seen like they have the little strings hanging off of them and they're like white. And he just looked really uncooked. They looked like gray. And he just fucking, it's just fucking disgusting. And then the gnarliest part is that the train, the, there's a train that's got all the ketchup and mustard on it that just goes around the table. And he's just happy as shit. Just like, I'm like, this is really fucked up. Like, this is terrible. And like, the one couple is just like, this is so wrong. He takes a bite of the hot dogs. And I'm like, this is the, the nastiest scene. I have ever seen in my life. Like that's even as a kid, you're like, this, I do not want these hot dogs. I wonder. Oh God, I don't even want to think about these hot dogs anymore. The one couple freaks the fuck out at the sight of the hot dogs, just like any normal person would, and they jump out the fucking window. They're like, you know what? We're out of here. We'll jump out the fucking window. I'd rather jump out a fucking window and eat those hot dogs. And it's just like, I agree. I wholeheartedly agree with you. Don't eat them. They're running and running and running, and they're about to cross this disgusting, stinky ass water. This movie is so gross. I can see why people didn't like it now, years later. It was just like, they across this gross ass, disgusting water. And once they do, John Candy is there. And the dude's like, why don't you let us take you somewhere nice? We can give you lots of money. We can give you whatever you wish, bro. Just take us the fuck out of here, and we'll take care of your desires, bro. Why don't you take a little vacation, bro? Somewhere nice. And John Candy's like, okay. And they peace the fuck out. It's awesome. And like they have their little happy ending, and you don't have to worry about them anymore. Because in any any other scary movie, those people would be fucking dead. You know, they'd be dead right there. But they live. Isn't that weird? Great movie. Damn it. So Chevy Chase is like trying to like spoon with her in bed, all smooth like, like trying to do the theory, like yawn. And then out of nowhere, John Candy pushes the button, and the bed starts fucking spinning in a goddamn circle. And I'm like, hell yeah! Like, can you imagine? Having sex on a bed like that, having someone pushing the button, having the shit spin the fuck out, would be fucking crazy. That's, I'd love to live in a house like that, and I'd totally do that to everybody who stayed in that room. But like, push the fucking sex button so they can fucking fly the fuck across the room and break this shit. Hopefully. They show more of this fucking awesome ass house, and like, there's a room full of bats. Like, how the fuck do you get a room full of bats? I'm down with it. They're in the hallway, the, the hallway wall starts chasing them, like, it wants to smash them in the fucking thing. Like, how the hell do you build a, a hallway that smashes people? They jump into another room, and like, it's just amazing. There's like all these dead bodies and old, old documents from the past of all the people that the judges killed with this cool trick murder house. That's probably where they got the idea for American Horror Story, Murder House, and ho a hotel from this, probably. And, you know, but they ended up fucking, there's a slide that happens, and they're sliding down this weird-ass slide thing, and they suddenly get split up. They get split up, and they can't go down the same slide, whatever. It's like, have you not been to slide school? Have you not had slide practice? And uh, Demi Moore ends up going outside, like, uh, just like the, just like, oh, I can't the camera. And she ends up going outside. Chevy Chase gets fucking split up somehow, and he, there's another really, really scary part of this movie. The part where fucking Dan Aykroyd takes his fucking hair off is one thing, and then he takes his freaking nose off, and he's got a nose hole, and it looks so scary. And they say there's another part where he takes his chin off, too, and he takes off all these parts of his face, but like, 
I only said the first two parts, and I'm like, I'm sure that part like wigged people out. Cause that's just, that even now watching that, I was like, I forgot about that part. Like, and you can see his nose hole, and you're like, that's brutal. Uh, another really part, they say this part came from Dan Aykroyd's dreams. He would dream of giant babies in diapers, super sweaty and greasy, working in junkyards, and this is what Demi Moore runs across. She sees these two big ass babies, sweaty and greasy, working in the junkyard, pounding hammers. And they chase her, and they're like, let's eat her. And I'm like, ah! And Demi Moore's like, I need to get the frick out of here. So she is running and running and running. And she runs into Eldona, and Eldona's like, oh, I'm going to kill this person right now. And he picks her up in a gorilla press slam like freaking Brock Lesnar. He's about to throw her ass in a goddamn flaming pit of just oil and fire and burning things and just have her die in that shit. And then the fat, the, the fat overweight twins... Or just like, no, let's not. Can you just keep her? Let's play with her. We'll hang out with her. It'll be cool. And I'm like, what do you mean play with her? And they're like, ooh. Like, tell me more about her fucking hope she gets thrown into that pit. The judge and Chevy Chase get into a big-ass bone fight, like a bone battle thing. And it's just like a sword fight of their bones. And, you know, it's pretty gnarly. And you can definitely think Chevy Chase is about to get killed by Dan Aykroyd any second now for yelling at him on this set. But then Eldona bursts in and runs and catches him and hugs him and just like, I love him now. I love him, Daddy. I want to marry him. And Dan Akron's like, well, I guess that's cool. You can marry him. Go ahead and take him. And they're like, eh, hey, hey, hey. I'm like, oh, shit. That's, that's even worse than dying. There's another really random part of this movie where uh, Digital Underground, uh, the Humpty Dance, Humpty Hump, Shock G himself and a young Tupac show up and they're just randomly there to hang out and like the judge is like, what are you guys doing here driving through New Jersey? And it's New Jersey Drive. And they're like, we're just a band. And he's like, all right, let's hear a song then. And they perform a song. <laughs> like a like, random movie has Digital Underground performing a freaking rap song. like, And it's fucking awesome, dude. Like Everybody loves the song, uh, same song. They play it on the jukebox at work and we all vibe out. And we're just like, what the hell? And I'm like, what the hell kind of scary movie is this? They randomly have Digital Underground out of nowhere just performing a song. I'm like, all right. And then, like that's it. And like the guy's like, well... That was a great performance, so you guys can leave. And everyone's just like, what? Like, I thought they were going to die. Like, I thought everybody's going to die. Like, nobody dies in this movie. Except there's two people. Who, there's four people who got spit into the goddamn bone grinder thing in the middle. Like, there's the only people who die. And Shock G and Digital Underground are cool, and we love them, and they're amazing. And they live. There's a part where that's actually really heartwarming and touching where the fucking the judge is like, why don't you marry my daughter, dude? And you can, like, make my daughter happy, and she won't have to be single anymore, and then you can take over all of this. Like, you can be the judge, you'll be the new judge, and it'll be freaking amazing, and everybody will be freaking happy. And Chevy Chase is like, hmm, maybe I will marry her if I don't get killed by you. Would that be cool? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, you know what I mean? I think the movie would have been better if Chevy Chase legitimately married, uh, like an Eldona and like became the, the new heir to the judge's seat. I can imagine him being the next guy to have everybody getting executed and being a jerk. Like I could totally see that and have him slowly getting older and more decrepit like some like young Jedi, some fucking Star Wars stuff. You're like, how does the how does a judge get made just by being an asshole all the time? And I'm like, Chevy Chase could have totally did that. But they have a little wedding and all that, and instead of him committing to his vows and being a good stand-up guy, he tries to run off and escape with Digital Underground, and Digital Underground's like, no, bro, like, that's on you, man, like, don't bring us into this, he said we can go, so you gotta handle that yourself, so we'll see you later, and Digital Underground pieces the freak out, and Chevy Chase gets thrown in the goddamn bone grinder for his insolence, for being a little jerk face, and Dan Aykroyd is happy as frick. And sort of just like fucking drop his ass in a goddamn machine. It's a roller coaster, roller coasting his ass through the fucking house and about to kill him and about to eat his ass alive and all that. But then, like, it's a really, really old machine apparently, and the, the rotator cuff breaks off of it and the machine falls apart before it can properly eat Chevy Chase. And he is lucky as freak because any, any other person would have been bone, dust, and juice by now. And he's really, really lucky, even though he does not deserve it. John Candy is like, I'm done with this job. I'm sick of the murders, and I'm out of here. He packs his favorite lamp and his favorite selfie, and he leaves. And he's done, and he's fine, and he's out. And I'm like, good for you, bro. They're about to chop up John Candy's girlfriend, or Chevy Chase's girlfriend, Demi Moore, with the big machine thing, because they don't like that Chevy Chase escaped all that. So 
They're like, you know what, we're going to drop some sugar and freaking heads and cut you all apart in pieces. And we're going to chain you up here. And it's going to be freaking awesome because we're evil people. And I'm like, dude, that's the best method he has to dispose of her. Like, you know, he's got all these roller coasters and death traps. And he's just going to drop blades on her. Like, that's kind of lame. Maybe he just wanted to lure Chevy Chase to that spot. But, like, somewhere he could see him and all that. But, like, what else? I'm sure he had other stuff in his, like, little kitchen that he could have cooked up. But whatever, I mean, they, they, they probably, the, the fucking studio probably cut all the good stuff anyway, so I'm sure this was a lot more intense of an ending. But, you know, Chevy Chase comes out of nowhere to save Demi Moore because he loves her. He makes a bomb with his cool bomb industrial powers, just like Walter White, and there's a big-ass bomb, and it's fine, and they run off into the night, and they're escaping and escaping, and they get to fucking what, come through the damn woods of metal and sheepskin, and it's just horrible stuff. They run past these evil ass statues and all that and like one thing I noticed about this years later is that the music makes it so much more not scary because if they play, if they re-edit this movie director's cut and put scary music this could have been like a really lot different vibe because they try to, it's never really that fucking intense, it's kind of just goofy and not that funny, it's, it's just like, it's a lot of halfway shit, like it's halfway scary and it's halfway funny but never 100% so that sucks but it's still a nice little shindig. It's not over though. Like they go and you think they're just gonna cruise into the sunset and they go straight to the freaking cops and they tell the cops this crazy ass long convoluted ass story and it's just like and this happened and this happened and this happened and we're gonna draw you diagrams and we're gonna show you everything that's fucking happened. And the guys are like, Alright, take us to this guy's house and we'll stop him ourselves and like come with us. And they're like, You want us to come with you? And they're like, Yeah, come with us. And they're like why? Like, just, just come with us. And they're like, fine, we'll come. So they Chevy Chase and Demi Moore bring all these freaking cops out to that exact same spot. Like they go right back to it, and like the dude answers the freaking door, and he's like, oh, you got a bunch of cops behind you. And it's like, the cops are like, hey, Judge Alvin, we love you. We're all best friends. And it's like, what the hell? So it's just like everybody loves the judge, and it's like a deep seated conspiracy. Because it's some Northwest shit where it's like everything's connected and he's part of the Illuminati and all that crap. And they're just like, oh, it's like, so Jimmy, Demi Moore and Jersey's pretty much like done, you know, dead and buried, right? Because it's like, you know, no way to get out of that. But then there's a nice little deuce ex machina because the place just randomly explodes. Like there's fire under the ground and it just fucking everything collapses and goes to shit. And people are dying and people are crying and laughing and it's just a lot of stuff to take in at once. So it's this movie's just. One night in hell, I guess, and just everything that happens is completely random, nonsensical. And as a kid, you love this sort of shit, but when you're an adult, you're like, this is kind of, this is kind of a weird movie. But I like it, you know, and fucking, that's not even the end of the movie. Like, there's another ending. It's like there's three endings that I didn't know where to freaking end it. Where it's just like, oh, the place collapsed, and you'd think everybody would be dead, but no, there's oil under this fucking shit. So now this guy, the judge, is rich as fuck. And this is like, oh, man, really? And this is like, yep, now he's rich as fuck. And he's coming for Chevy Chase, and Chevy Chase is like, no. And he bursts through the freaking wall, and that's the actual ending. So, like, like really? So it's just like, yeah, that is probably kind of a crazy movie. I wouldn't say it's the worst movie. I didn't have, it wasn't painful watching it like Dragon Ball Evolution was, or Avatar was. I just wish they could have let Dan Aykroyd do his thing and deliver his full vision and have more fun with it because it's a lot of just creepy stuff that's played for laughs and I wish it was more like, ugh. And it's kind of a weird short movie. It's like kind of the plot is, I mean, I guess it is kind of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, pretty much the same stuff. Uh, people go to the wrong place and they get chased by monsters and almost everyone's killed except not really. So, I mean, I liked it. If you like goofy ass kind of scary movies that are well known for all the wrong reasons and that have flopped tremendously at the box office and cost studios a lot of money, then you should check out this movie because it's a freaking classic. Uh, I'm Garrett Faber and that's it.